All right, folks, we are live. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, it is 8.43 p.m., uh, and we are just going to uh, uh, get set up here. So feel free to just hang out, grab a drink. We've got Jared with us. Hey, Jared, how's it going? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. All right, so just sit tight and relax. Uh, I'm just going to get a couple of things set up here online. So just join us and uh, grab a drink or tea or water or whatever it is that you want to drink. And uh, we'll get started in a little bit, in about 15 minutes. Hope everybody's doing well and staying, staying sane during all this craziness, nonsense. Yeah. Yep. Some people might be happy because uh, they just got their stimulus checks. <laughs> Go on, buy some. Uh, save, save that for some Kill Holman later. Yes, please do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. All right. We got somebody on with us in a little bit. It seems so. Huh? We got Sean. Sean Kaka. Yeah, what's up, Sean? Yeah. Nice of you to make it. Yeah, yeah. We're going to get started in just a little bit. Everybody sit tight, hang out. I am just going to get set up on a couple of pages here. Right. Are you drinking anything tonight, Jared? Uh, I will be. I just finished dinner, so I'm currently uh, having a, a beer that I bought just strictly for the name. Um, where is it at there? I just crush a lot. So this is oh, a nice, uh, nice sour beer to cleanse the palate a little bit after dinner. Sean just said, just killed a Mahir Bay. Trying to decide what's open for this. Well, we're going to start with Makir Bay. Makir, okay. Uh, Sean, then we'll do San Egg. We'll do some STR. Um, I just popped this bad boy open, U.S. small batch number one. So nice. we'll, be, uh, we'll be tasting that, and then we'll be talking about some cool, uh, some cool casks coming in. Oh, nice. So. I'm not a player. I just crush a lot, you know. Yeah, I, I saw it on the shelf and Big Pun came right. <laughs> and uh, I was I like, he, I gotta buy it. And then it turned out to be good. So I went back and bought another six pack of it. I think he I think he died. Is he a, is he alive or is he <laughs> um one of them died. I don't know if it was <laughs> big pun. One of them one of them definitely passed away. Yeah, so yeah, sorry. Yeah. What can I say, huh? Man, that music's not cool with the kids nowadays anyways, so. It's not? Nah, today's stuff is pretty pretty garbage. At least the stuff my kid listens to anyways. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I see, man. I, I know I'm a pasty individual, but I look real pasty here. <laughs> yeah, well, it's the lighting. It's the lighting. I am not a professional sound and stage guy. I'll give you that. Yeah, no. Oh, man, yeah, music's changed a lot. Yeah, music changes all the time. I mean, it's kind of like, I, you know, I feel like slowly, you know, I'm getting to the age of like, what are kids listening to nowadays, you know? And I feel old already just by saying that, you know? Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the fact you have to ask. You know, and it's like, uh, it's like, man, am I, am I that grumpy old man now or what? What's going on? Uh, we're, all get, we're all getting there quickly, so. Yeah. If you're, just joining, if you're just joining us, we're just getting set up. Uh, we're going to start in just a little bit. Just sit back, relax, just ushering people in right now. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get started really soon. 
Nice. All this kill homing in front of me is killing me looking at these bottles, man. <laughs> if you guys have any questions, you can feel free to post them and then I'll be I'll read them and uh we'll we'll try to address everyone uh during the broadcast. <laughs> Yep. All right, I'm on here. Make sure I got it all. <clears throat> I'm just playing with my lamp here, trying to fix this light so you guys don't mind me. Okay. If, it works, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah, as long as you can see me a little bit. Too much whiskey on my desk, man. It's a rough job. <laughs> yeah, right. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. So you're in Taiwan. Yep, I'm. Uh, I'm hi hiding out here, man. Nice, nice. Yep. There's a. Uh... Uh, last couple of days has been zero confirmed cases in this in the country, so it's you know they've got it pretty under control. That's great to hear. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, meanwhile, uh, not as lovely back home in the U.S. No, not quite. <laughs> not quite. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. But, uh, you know, if you have a gun, you can go out and, you know, protest. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks. thanks. <laughs> yeah. It's the, it's the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Flex your, uh, you know, flex your, uh, you know, your, your rights as American, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> All right. All right, we got about 10 more minutes. Feel free to post some questions or anything like that, and we'll try to address them a little bit. Um, got some nice uh, pictures that Jared took when he was at the distillery. We're going to look at later, but, you know, even before that, we're going to just, you know, talk about, you know, uh, uh, um, just the distillery, you know, some of these single cast releases coming up, you know, even, you know, just talk a little bit about Jared got to be where he's at, etc. Oh, that wasn't, <laughs> I don't know if you want to hear that. that was not <laughs> no, that's, that's the fun of it. All right. <sighs> Trying to get this a little closer so we can see better. You know, so hopefully we get a lot of people from the uh, Kilhoman Appreciation Society on with us in a little bit. We should have okay. a couple, I think. I right know. Yeah, I'm sure there should be. Post that here. So this is getting to be quite the regular thing here, huh? 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, otherwise I would be actually doing in-person tastings. Um, but yeah, not you know, there, there, there's nothing, there's none of that going on anymore. Um, yeah, I think we had this actually planned out to to get me up into <laughs> to do this. <laughs> yeah, and that's not you know happening anytime soon right now. But but who knows? Who knows? You know, uh, maybe in June. You know, or maybe you know, economy's going economy's going to open up soon. We'll have plenty. Well, I read today. Uh, didn't uh, they're they're talking about possibly open up, opening up some of the uh, fine wine stores to fulfill orders, so they okay. can they can ramp yeah. up maybe a little bit on their. You can call to the call to wherever or go online and place an order, and they're they're going to open certain locations to try to get more than a hundred people a day boozed in the state of Pennsylvania. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and it's and it's bad because you know you you know people they're, they're almost not letting you uh, in the other states too because they're trying to be locked down over there and then if you're just you know roaming around trying to get booze over there then they have a right to pull you over and everything too I, I hear supposedly yeah there's uh I don't know if the picture was real or not I saw a picture on social media up at the uh, the real big total wine here. Their, their big one yeah. up right on the border. And there's about six state troopers there <clears throat> sitting outside their SUVs, uh, supposedly pulling people over without estate plates. Yeah. Well, so, so I, yeah, so I, I, I heard about that and it's, and, and I real I, I believe it's more, it's not so for like buying alcohol, but just being out and about why, while the state's under quarantine kind of thing, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. But I know, so. uh, I know for a fact that, um, Ohio and um, I don't know who else did it, but uh, Ohio now, um, because they're so close to the border over by Pittsburgh and Western PA, um, the state issued a mandate that they're not allowed to sell booze to people without a state driver's licenses in, in uh, like six of the counties on the eastern oh, side. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah I, I, yeah. I did see that. I did see that too. I did see that. I did see yep, that. So. Uh, Ohio is suffering. They're not even doing like to go cocktails and food to go. The restaurants, I believe, are just pretty They're much not. shut down. They were for a little while. I think they may have opened up <clears throat> to go orders and stuff, but I'm not 100% really? sure about that. Yeah, right. two, two of my six states shut down over all this. So work's been a little tougher in the last few weeks. Oh, no, I imagine. And uh, if anybody's joining us, we're going to get started in just a few moments, just uh, ushering people in right now. And uh, I'm also sharing the link on a few pages. So um, sit back, relax, grab your wine or whiskey or preferably Kilholman. Unfortunately, I don't have Kilholman on, uh, at home right now. It's a shame. There's a few but... Taiwanese exclusives, aren't there? <laughs> Is every they are open or closed or what? <clears throat> They're open, but you know I have to track them down, and I didn't, I, I didn't have time to do it before this, yeah. the for the broadcast. I'll but, have um, some. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. So we're gonna. So, but uh, I, I am very familiar with the uh, taste profile of this of this whiskey, and uh, we will definitely still talk about it while while I watch you drink. There you go. Uh, Donna, you, Donna, you know, Donna. People watching me drink, so, so. <laughs> yeah. It's the first time I've put on a shirt with buttons in like two weeks, man. Feels good. <laughs> That's what we're all about, man. That's what we're yep. all about. We're we're uh, trying to elevate, uh, you know, people from the uh, unshaven and uh, uh, you know pajamas that they're used to every day. Yep, yep, fantastic. I put my watch on. Haven't worn a watch in like two weeks, so. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like I'm out on the town almost right now, hanging out with you guys. I, I know, yeah. It's almost like we're at a bar or something, you know. <laughs> That's great. That's great. People, feel free to get dressed up at home too, you know. <laughs> yeah, I was going to put the Make kilt it. on, but then I'd have to do the tasting standing up. So that's no fun. Yeah, yeah everybody. Uh, everybody can uh, also participate at home and 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 get all get all swanky. Yep. All right. All right. So you're uh you're hold up there until uh till this is all over with, pretty much. 
Yeah, I think so. I think uh, that's the plan right now. At least you know, because my office is closed and everybody else's office is closed. It's like you right. know, what's you know, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna what? I'll isolate here with my family instead of uh, isolate at home. In, in you know, right? You know, what's the point of that? Now are they letting people in and out of the country, or they got it all locked no, down? No, well, yeah, it's locked down. There's nobody in. Nobody's entering the country. Um, gotcha. But you can leave, obviously. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. So, uh, Gene says, thank you. Good evening. And, uh, thank you for this lovely diversion. <laughs> no problem, Gene. Glad to help. Sean's gonna, Sean says, uh, gonna go Kilholman Vintage 2010 next. Oh, Sean, you're gonna beat me to that one. I gotta find it and open it now. I actually, yeah. that, that just landed right when all this started. And, and believe it or not, I, I have a bottle at the house. I have not opened it and tasted it yet. So, yeah. And then my that friend Mike, Mike, Mike says uh, we were. I was supposed to be in Pittsburgh today or tomorrow, and then but then that's not happening uh, for a class. And then uh, Bob says the uh, Monday curbside. I think that's he was referencing to the uh, PLCB opening up and allowing curbside stuff. Okay. Travis Williams. I think I recognize that. Big Lebowski head profile. Uh, I think he's from the Kilholman group. Is that the Big Lebowski? Yeah. <laughs> this is a big fan of Kilholman. Glad to have you here. Yeah. And then Laird from uh, uh, Laird from uh, Newark, Delaware, present. Laird's uh, always – Laird's always – he's he, he's uh, he's always a very proud uh, Newark, Delaware – uh you know uh so i guess uh resident because he's that's that's his that's his uh calling card it's like new york new york delaware present so he can uh <laughs> he can come over and sit six feet behind me if he wants we're in the same town <laughs> yeah yeah well yeah jared's in new york and he asks how do you probably pronounce the distiller? Kill I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna say it so you get to tell how you say it okay yeah, kill holman it's, it's, Yep. Yeah, it's pretty Kill simple. Homer. You just pretend there's no C in there. I tell everybody it's that Gaelic silent C. Yeah. It really gets you. So uh, pretty David, simple. Kill Homer. David, okay, our friend David down in, I think David's down in Maryland or D.C., right, David? Uh, but he's enjoying the Saturn cask finish. Nice. That one, uh, that was about a year and a half ago, maybe, I think, that came out. Yeah, yeah. Laird says, I love this town. It's a great place to live. It is, it is. And what part yeah. of town is he in? What part of town you in? What part of town is he in? Do we do we know? DC's in the house. Somebody said. All right. DC Some of my in favorite the house. Places. All right. Well, I guess we can uh, get started. It's nine o'clock. Thanks everybody for coming and joining. Uh, we got we got about seventeen people live right now, but people will just start joining in and and uh, this broadcast will also be available after this uh, is over, and uh, it will be available on my page, the Whiskey Steward page, as well as uh, later on it will be uploaded to YouTube. So you know, if you didn't catch the beginning or end or whatever, or you need to step away, whatnot. Don't worry, this will be uh, uh, all uh, recorded. And uh, if you have any questions, feel feel free to just leave it in the comments, uh, and then we'll we'll try to address it um, and uh, keep things lively. All right. And Laird says over by Delaware Park. Uh, all right, I'm over. Uh, I'm over by the football stadium. Michael, Michael, we have Michael Siebert. Yeah, oh, Mike, how you doing? Is drinking the SCN Kilholman four year here. <clears throat> oh, good man. Is that a challenge? <laughs> I think I might have a little bit bit of that left. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, Peter Williams is enjoying the enjoying something uh, uh, from Texas with a Barbados rum finish. Is that Kilholman? Yeah, I think that was a Specs exclusive, perhaps, that huh. uh, okay. is in Texas. Tipping a wee dram of the Seneg this evening, Laird says. Yep, we're gonna we're gonna get into that here in a little bit. We got that ready to go. 
Awesome. All right. All right. Awesome. So thanks everybody again for joining. Just feel free to leave the comments. I'm not, I can't address uh, uh, all the comments live uh, as, as we go, but I'll try to, I'll try to keep my eye on the comment section as we go along. We got 21 people. Oh, Jared. Oh, what happened there? <laughs> <laughs> oh jared uh oh there he goes he's back back okay too much drinking already i'm not are something. you back yep i'm back <laughs> okay all right gotcha all right all right uh so yes yeah, so let's start with introductions uh uh um let me introduce myself uh my handle is the whiskey steward find me on facebook instagram uh, youtube uh and uh, i typically do these tastings live in philadelphia uh, as well as in Taiwan, I, I go around, I teach about whiskey and I spread the whiskey gospel, if you will. And, uh, you know, Jerry and I have just uh, become friends because obviously we're all we're all a part of the whiskey family here. And uh, so, Jared, please uh, tell us about yourself and tell us about your journey, my friend. <clears throat> uh, well, it's uh, it's pretty long, but it's pretty simple. Um, I uh, I moved out here to Delaware quite a while ago uh to attend the university here in newark and yep. um boy meets as I was, kind of story yeah and uh <laughs> you know obviously it's college one of the best party schools in the country here nice so um there was a little bit of drinking going on and uh you know bit. i need some, some uh some spending money and a discount on booze so um the day i turned 21 i walked into the liquor store down the street and asked him could i have a job uh, he wasn't yeah. very happy. I'd been buying booze there for like two or three years at that point. Um, uh -huh. So <laughs> my 21st birthday. But nice. uh, from there, it just kind of uh, it just kind of blew up. It was, uh, you know, ringing six packs and stocking shelves. And then it turns into, you know, receiving deliveries. And next thing you know, the boss is going on vacation. So you're in charge. And it just kind of uh -huh. uh, went from there. I spent probably... 10 to 12 years um in the retail setting retail environment which okay. i really love yeah uh it's kind of my background in the business and then uh, a couple of years with a small distributor wasn't really my thing um i like being able to sell a little bit or sell everything not just here's what you got uh -huh. to do here's who you have to sell it to so um the store i think it was early early 2010s, maybe 2012, I would say. Um, the store I was working at that I was in charge of actually was was purchased. And um, the new owner said, you know, you, you guys all do a great job. You're all welcome to stay, except Jared, you got to go. So oh. <laughs> wow. um, as, okay. as the new owner, he also wanted to be the manager of the store. Um, we're still good uh. friends with each other forever. <laughs> um, there's no hard feelings there, but kind of okay, too many right. kids in the kitchen kind of thing. So, <laughs> so uh, when that happened, I, I yeah. made a phone call um, to at the time one of the owners of Impex, and I said, "Hey, I got I got some uh, some bad news." And he says, "Well, what is it?" I said, "Well, we've uh, we've I've lost my job. They sold the store." And I have he some said, bad well, news for me, but good news for you because I'm going to come work for you guys. Well, he said, oh, you know, he said, I said, don't worry, I'll be fine. I'll, I'll, I'll find a job somewhere. There's always something in this industry that you can go do. Yeah. And he said, well, I'm not worried about you. He said, I just lost about 80% of my sales in Delaware. So <laughs> he wasn't really too concerned with me, but um, <clears throat> all the next week and he said, hey, how about Delaware, Maryland and DC to get started? So it's, it's nice. kind of just, been, you know, about 20 years now of, uh, doing everything from ringing six packs to um, selecting casks and things like that. So it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. It doesn't feel like I go to work when I wake up every day and, yeah. and head out the door. So it's uh, something that's really fun to do and hopefully I can keep doing it for a while. Yeah. Living the dream. And uh, Laird says go blue hens. Yeah. Yeah. I always wanted to <laughs> own a too when I was growing up, you know, it's, you think it's going to be like something really cool. You own a bar. And then when I was actually taking my business classes at UD and realized, Hey, you know what the number one failure rate of any business you can own is to restaurant. Wow. Or bar. So yeah. they, really? they open up yeah. and all the time. So gotcha. and this was years ago, but that kind of turned me off from wanting to, to be a bar owner, just, just too much work. So 
It's a little yeah. easier to be on the supply side of it. Yeah. All right. Well, so let's get into the Cajoma. How about that, huh? <clears throat> uh, that's great. Let me, uh, I accidentally drank most of my first dram that we were having. So yeah, I'm pouring a little bit more. <laughs> <Like> accidentally. <laughs> so uh, you- hey, half hour is a long time for one dram. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is um this is actually I absolutely love Kilhoman Distillery. Um I've yeah. actually been following them since almost day one as soon as I heard about them. Um yeah. we have been lucky enough to be the sole US importer uh Impex beverages uh since I believe from the, from the beginning the, or yeah, we were the first ones to import Kilhoman and uh okay. we must have been doing a good enough job they stuck with us. So oh, um wow. I think it was 2010, maybe, when we mm-hmm. started bringing Kilhoman into the U.S. Okay. Um, right. And I just, I tasted it and I, I fell in love with the whiskey. And right. to be able to represent them and sell them is amazing. It's um, it's one of the coolest stories, you know. It's it's Anthony Wills, who his yes, wife is from Isla. Awesome story. And they're living on Isla and, you know, Anthony wants to... Uh, wants to put a distillery on Isla and so what's, what's the Anthony's background? Like how did he get into the whiskey game? Um, I am not too sure about that, okay. whether it was just, um, you know, a fan of the spirit and a fan of the, the drinking and, uh-huh. you know, his wife lives on Isla and, and was born and raised Scottish. So I think, uh, I think well, there was just a love for whiskey there and maybe the desire to be his own boss. That's, that's what I would like to think. You yeah. Know, who doesn't, who doesn't want to own a distillery and be their own boss <laughs> and make the decision? So. It's it's because it's, it's interesting because uh, we just uh, so we, I believe we have a uh, Patrick Cole online here with the Kona Kilty whiskey uh, a mm-hmm. line, and uh, we were just talking about that you know you know we're seeing just this big you know renaissance of craft distilling. And yeah. new distilleries coming up, and you know, Kilhoman is still relatively new compared to you know your, you know, hundred plus year old you know other Idaho distilleries. Oh yeah, and uh, uh, and and they're making and they're making waves too because like look at all these different casts that they're doing, and like you know uh, these newer and smaller distilleries, they're the ones that I I've mentioned before is are the head of at the forefront of innovation, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, and just trying like crazy casts and, and, and this and that. And it's just, you're just not going to get some of this stuff with like some of the big brands. Um, and, and yeah. then, so I was just curious, you know, uh, what the owners did before. Cause a lot of times there were, you know, successful business owners or, uh, you know, generations of, uh, farmers or something like that in the area, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I think, um, I, I think Anthony was fairly successful in, in his business ventures up until starting Kilhoman. Um, yeah, oh yeah. I imagine so. <laughs> it was not cheap. Well, that's, that's the distillery now. That's not how it actually started out. So oh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, right. that's the distillery last May, the visitor center is almost done. Um, but so back in, you know, in 2004, they're like, you know, I, I can imagine his wife saying, hey, what are you thinking? Nobody's <laughs> built a, nobody's opened a distillery in 124 years on this island. What yeah. makes you think you're going to do it, you know? So, yeah, um, yeah they basically, um, you know, the farm, Rockside Farm predates the distillery. The farm was there long before the distillery. Um, they yeah. were growing barley and selling yeah. them to some of the distilleries on the island um as well as some of the malting houses but um i want to say it was maybe six years ago uh that um the farmers on the island if anybody's been to isla the weather's not exactly uh beautiful yeah. and tropical uh the farmers kind of wanted to retire and move back off the island to to live out their their days on the main part and um so Anthony purchased all the, the farm and the land. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, what he, what he really had in mind when he started this was, was not a, a craft or a, or a boutique distillery. He wanted to open a farm distillery. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I don't know if he wanted to wear boots and jeans to work every day and be a farmer or what, but he, okay. he had this idea. And this is what spawned the hundred percent Isla is that he had this idea of, of wanting to make whiskey the way that, the farmers and everyone yeah. else on the island was doing it 200 years, 150 years prior to that, 
which yeah. is which is growing their barley. Um, and, and it came, you know, out of one, they're making it cause they like it, but two, you've got all this barley. What are you going to do with it? Let's, let's make some whiskey. So, yeah. um, you know, it, it, it originally started out as the idea of it was to be a farm and they are a farm. What you can't see here, you can see some of the barley fields here in the photo. Uh, what you can't see is behind the hill that I'm standing on, uh, all the sheep, uh, they have, they have cows, they have chickens, um, they're, they're an agricultural as well as, as a farm that has livestock. So really? oh, okay. yeah, they're, they're absolutely a full blown farm in every aspect of it. That happens really? to so, have. Are they cool. selling, are they selling the livestock as for food and all that stuff as well? Or, or is this part of the farm? I, yeah, I think it's just part I'm of sure the farm. They're not doing it. There's, uh, I believe there's only about a dozen cows there. Uh, okay, it's not like they've got hundreds of cows. I mean, yeah, there's only so much land, um, but I think they do use some for meat. Um, the sheep, obviously, they're they're shearing and and selling the wool, and then um, the chickens. I, I'm hoping they're eating the chickens. That's about all chickens are good for. So, <laughs> or eggs, fertilizer. eggs, eggs, eggs. Uh, and the fertilizer for the field isn't, isn't that yeah. bad either. So yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so he started this little distillery. I think. Uh, so they started uh, 2005, December 14th is when they filled their first cask. December 14th, 2005 is when what? Uh, when they filled their first cask. When they when filled they put their, their first cask, cask. gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they'd, they'd been up and running. Their first cask was filled. Uh, I think they filled about a dozen casks that year. Okay, okay. So when people say, hey, Kilhoman started in 2005. The first full year of production really wasn't until 06. Uh -huh. And uh, I think they produced something absurd, like 30,000 liters or something in that okay. first year, like just a minuscule amount of whiskey. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Um, their skills, so. yeah. And so, so they're, they're coming up on their 15 year anniversary then it seems. Uh, yes. Yep. And we are coming up on our 10th anniversary with Impex in Kilhoman. Um, uh -huh. We've actually bottled a, a cask, a 14 year old bourbon cask. That'll be coming okay. in under probably the Impex Evolution label um, to okay. celebrate ten year anniversary as a as the importer at Kilhoman. So, oh, very nice, really very nice. For, yeah, I'm really excited for that. But yeah, wow. um, so, so the early it, day, go ahead. So, so, so we did have a question. I mean, this this uh, it is still family owned and owned by uh, the original owners and probably their investors and whatnot, right? Yeah, there are a couple investors, but it's still Anthony's there on the at the distillery every day making the decisions. Um, yeah. His boys are are all a big part of marketing and sales, <laughs> as well as they don't do so much at the distillery physically anymore. Yeah, uh, as they are supporting the market and doing doing marketing and things like that. Um, but and yeah, the whole family's still involved, and they're all there. It's it's just a, a really cool place. You can sense like the family atmosphere when you go yeah. there. Yeah. And, and I think that's really cool because, you know, same thing with uh, when I was talking to, um, you know, Colin Kilty, because it just, it just happened just two days ago. So it's kind of fresh in my mind and, and Patrick's on with us. Um, um, it, they're, they're, they're owned by natives, right? So Anthony, you said he's a, an Isla native, right? No, and Anthony, want Anthony's actually English. His wife is the one from Isla. Okay. All right. Well, so, you know, sort of technically. <laughs> so he I think married, his wife. He married his into wife. the Honda family. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. I gotcha. And then, uh, uh, but at least it's, it's, it's independently owned by a local family. Right. And, yeah. uh, uh, and I was talking to this, uh, I was mentioning this to somebody about how, you know, it's kind of a shame that a lot of Scotch distillers aren't really owned by scots and you know locals and whatnot anymore um but this is just cool because you know he's trying to follow tradition he's trying to be the farmer distiller right and uh and, and he and he's and he's wanting to be in his community or his wife's community on isla you know because i i mean what else is there there's not really that much to do you know <laughs> on, no, on isla. there's about three thousand <laughs> people on isla if you guys <laughs> yeah right the sheep I mean, number the people. 
yeah, obviously great for the economy and and just I think it's just great for the heritage. And I'm 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 a big proponent of, you know, even even like in Pennsylvania, we have you know Pennsylvania rye coming back with Dad's Hat and a couple of these keeps a couple of these distilleries, and I just really love that heritage part. Like even Maryland rye is coming back, you know, and it's kind of like you're you're going back to that, you know, uh, respecting. Uh, the the original and, and, and the original process and and how things were done and I think that's really cool and I think that's why why Kilman is very attractive to a lot of whiskey drinkers is because they're quote unquote keeping it real you know <laughs> yeah, yeah well that that and you know it's um <laughs> it, it's great whiskey which doesn't hurt at all but yeah I, I think oh right I think a lot of the new and and everybody talks about these craft distilleries and craft this and craft that I I think. In Anthony's mind, he didn't want a craft distillery. He wanted a uh, traditional distillery. Right. And and the cool part about that is that there's a lot of these distilleries popping up now who were actually, you know, they're not trying to find ways to have shortcuts and produce this crazy stuff. Um, they're, they're going after tradition, but at the same time, uh, because they're new, it does allow them to do some really cool things with some – experimental casks and and some things that as you said earlier some of your more traditional you know 100 200 year old <laughs> really really aren't getting into just because it's they're too big they don't have the ability a lot of them to run these small experiments yeah. um they're, they're yeah. coming around now a lot of the bigger distilleries are starting to do it but i mean you know this was this was something that that had to succeed because it was, it was Anthony's basically everything he had went into this distillery to get it started. And, yeah. uh, fortunately for him, uh, Dr. Jim Swan stepped in to, to help him out. And they had John McClellan there as the distillery manager for a while before he passed away. So he had yeah. some really great people giving him advice and, and helping him in the beginning. And it really, uh, it really turned out great for him. So. Well, yes, that's, so that's interesting too. So, Dr. Jim Swan was also involved with the project. Absolutely. Okay, very nice. Very nice. Look, if you get a bottle of Kilhoman, and Travis, you probably have some of these. If you look at some of the very, very early bottlings um, of Kilhoman, you'll see Dr. Swan's name on it. As oh, does. wow. Okay. Those, so, are, those, yeah. those must be, those are, those are special. Yeah, those are the little. Uh, I don't know if I have one here or not. Yeah, but I, I, I have one here. I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go dig it out in the middle of this. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Really, like if you go back into the seasonal releases, into some of your early UK releases, uh, you'll see uh, Dr. Jim Swan's name will be. So if you look at the Kilhoman bottle, yeah. you've got Anthony Wills always here. And on the other side here, you'll see Jim Swan. So there's that I know of. There's been three names there. There's been Jim Swan, John McClellan, and now Robin, who is the new, uh, I guess, yeah. distillery manager there that, yeah, that Jim, works under Anthony. So uh, just for those that you know might not be familiar with the, uh, Dr. Jim Swan, and he was a kind of a savant, right? He was like uh, uh, he was just a uh, uh, expert in whiskey making, and he consulted a lot of great distilleries. Uh, you know, I'm in Taiwan right now, and uh, obviously a lot of people know Kavalon, yeah. right? And uh, I, I had no idea that they helped, uh, that, that, that he was also involved with Kill Holman. So, I mean, that's another reason why you guys are making such great whiskey, you know, just because, uh, you know, Jim Swan was had, obviously had a hand. And unfortunately, Jim Swan's no longer with us anymore. <clears throat> um, we passed, but uh, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Have, um, we at Impex, we have, we have four distilleries we represent who all were, were helped out in the beginning by, by Dr. Swan. Yeah. So yeah. Darren Kilhoman, uh, milk and honey, which we, which yeah. we just brought in and, uh, good and Corollis, our Belgian single malt. Uh, yeah. Dr. Swan was involved with all four of those distilleries, getting him up. And towards the end of it, I mean, he spent decades in the whiskey industry yeah. and, you know, he stopped actually working for other people and started yeah. working for himself. And yeah. what would happen is people would call him up and say, Hey, I need your help. No problem. Get your checkbook out. I'll fly over. <laughs> Get your checkbook out. Yep. I fly home with my check. So yeah, he, yeah. Uh, he helped a lot of really what are what are turning out to be 
really great distilleries get their start. Yeah, you know, you know, it's interesting. I, I'm curious if there's a list somewhere. You know, now that I'm, I'm curious because, like, I, I, I'm curious of uh, I want to get a list of distilleries that Dr. Jim Swan has helped before he had before he left us, and mm -hmm. uh, and and I, I'm, I'm just curious. Like, I want to follow those distilleries and see how they're doing. You know. Yeah. And uh, you guys are one. Obviously, Kavalon's one. Um, uh, Kelowna Kilty is one of the one, one of one of the uh, last ones that you worked with as well. Okay. Um, um, which was I didn't know that too. And then somebody did mention the STR, uh, the the concept of STR, which is uh, shaved toast That's and rechar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then so Kavalon's obviously a big proponent of that. Does Kilholman also uh, participate in that? Um, well, so I, you're going to have to bear with me here as I switch bottles that's holding up my camera. Yeah. Here. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're, we're high tech. <laughs> here you are, so let me tell you. Um, so, yeah. So this was actually um, released last year. This is the mm. ST release from Kilhoman. <clears throat> oh, wow. Okay. How so many they released that? this. Um. Uh, let me see. The nice part about the new Kill Home and stuff, they put these tags on there for people okay. like me who forget things. Uh, so this is filled in 2012, bottled in 2018. <clears throat> so it's about a seven-year-old okay. whiskey. Okay. Um, okay. And it's full maturation in these STR casks. And that was yeah. kind of – it's a really cool concept. And all these milk and honey is heavy into using the STR casks. Obviously, Kavalon, uh, Kilhoman, I think yeah. was the first release that actually like put STR on the label to yeah. describe the type of. Um, okay. So good and Columbus in Belgium, they just call them anchor casks. The name okay. of the brewery is anchor, um, but they're STR casks. Uh, Pandaren with Rich Oak and the Myth are using STR casks for finishing. So it's really. Um, I mean, it, it's kind of his signature. That's that, signature, you know, yeah. You know, it's like, like, yeah. That's his, like, uh, you know, Mortal Kombat finishing move kind of thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know that's, it. that's his special uh, up, down, up, down, left, right, A, B, A, B thing, you know? <laughs> I was, hey, I was playing Contra yesterday, man. I was playing <laughs> yesterday. I, I'm nowhere near as good as I used to be, though. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Uh, uh, on on the regular right. Nintendo or <clears throat> or, yeah, or is it I like one of those uh, like six hundred <laughs> games in one little box thing? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It looks like a Nintendo, but it can't say Nintendo. Uh, so <laughs> it's not all the games on there though. Super you Mario's know, on the, there. Contra. Uh, the, rich, the original Contra, then, right? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, wonder. If, I wonder if, if, but the code still works. The code in this like okay, fake Nintendo. Say, wonder, does the code still work? Still work? Okay. It does. <laughs> Uh, good, uh, fun yeah. times, Contra. Yeah, dating ourselves yeah. again. You know, we're that's just talking right. about we're just talking about how we're getting old. Um, so great. <clears throat> so that's really interesting. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so talk talk about um, <clears throat> what makes Kilholman different, and like, you know, Anthony starting the distillery, and um, well, <clears throat> besides, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a frog in my throat. Um, besides being more of a, uh, yeah, then like my finishing, but yeah. So, um, besides being a kind of like, uh, a, a, a grain to glass, I guess you could say, right. Cause you guys also sort of, you guys also, yeah, model. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, besides this, like what else makes kill special that you learn, you know, like we obviously all read like the websites and be like, oh yes, you know, it's the pee, it's the water, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, you know, maybe you can maybe you can touch on the water. Do they use any kind of special? Uh, is there a, a special water source they use, or et cetera? Yeah. Uh, is there any other insights that makes kind of Hillman unique and special? And then this is what they wanted to do to start, like uh, uh, you know, share, please share. <laughs> Yeah, so there's uh, if you could actually flip that first picture you had on of the distillery. Yeah, um, sure. Something, something really cool here. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with the uh, the so Lock Gorm bottling that Kilhoman does, no, the one with the distillery in it. Yeah, so this picture is just you know kind of like the landscape, right? That's part of the barley fields. That's where they had us out digging peat to get the experience. So yeah. there's there's okay. some peat <laughs> yeah. out there, free labor. Barley. Yep. <laughs> So if we go all the way back uh, uh, to the beginning. This one? So, yep. So if you guys look real closely on the top left part up there, 
uh, you'll see some blue. That's actually the ocean there. So they are right on the coast. Um, but okay, if you look there, oh, here we go. Yeah. Top right. But you if see, you look, people can see my, curse, my mouse cursor too, I think. Well, where your cursor just was to the right side of that photo, right there, there yep. that's actually Loch Gorm. And okay, that, yeah, that there you go. Feeds into their water. That's their water source coming from the from the lock there. So gotcha. it's literally just across the road from the distillery. So gotcha. I mean, they're not using that for the entire farm operations, but that's right, right. that's the bulk of the filling there. They're pulling the water from there. Uh, runs in a little spring down across the road by the distillery. So pretty gotcha. cool. Are they, are they treating the water uh, afterwards or? Are they do some kind of filtration um, or like are they distilling the water do you know or or the, you know they doing reverse osmosis they have <laughs> to treat the water um unfortunately uh the yeah. lesson i learned when we were there visiting last year is um the water that they're they're pulling that they're using in the sinks and in the toilets and you know just just the regular <laughs> yeah, water, water. That use there um it runs over this peat and you were talking about peat getting in the water, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, what yeah. it does, it physically gets in the water and it turns it like this mucky color. It's still yeah. clear, but it's not like this right. brownish. So they, they can't really use that, uh, especially with, with <laughs> uh, proofing down the whiskey to put it into the <laughs> bottle. And stuff. you don't want to put a bunch of brown, you know, sudsy looking water in there. So yeah, it does get treated, but it's, it's not like, uh, it's not like tap water that they're they're treating out. It is that that, that water can be from a, the spring. That can be a special release in the future. If I'm sure somebody will want to <laughs> drink the monkey the water, water. The moment. Yeah. <laughs> well, from the source, from the source, some of that bottled water, and yeah, it'll be nice yeah. and. Uh, no, but so that's Lock Gorm right there. Uh, Makir Bay yeah. is just to the left, all the way to down there. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a. Uh, had a had a really cool time there. Got a, about an hour and a half, two hours to just kind of wander around, uh, yeah. and I had a half a glass of Kilhoman at the time. So, you nice. know, I, I kind of wandered around, took some photos, hiked up the hill, bothered the guys putting the casks in the warehouse that had just been filled. Um, so this is their their still house or what yeah. was their still. Um, so these are the two original stills here. Uh, a couple little ones, you know, they're not very big. Okay. And in the back, if you look, the you see the back wall there. Uh, on the yeah. other side of that was the old, uh, the old visitor center and gift shop. They actually blew that wall out. And there's another photo I sent you, um, yeah. which shows from that wall on where they just recently, uh, I think last April, they put in their second set of stills. So yeah. same exact still shape and size, but they now have two sets running. Gotcha. Which uh, which uh, which photo was that? The next photo, if I did it right. Nope. Other way. Uh, nah, I guess I didn't do yeah, it right. Uh, anybody in this one? Uh, there you go. Yeah. Yep. So you can see see the guy leaning by the window on the right. You can see where the old wall used to be, where gotcha. the still room ended. So, so all that behind that is new, and those are their new shiny stills they put in last year. Uh, okay, yeah, I was to say so. These are additional stills that they put in into the in addition to the ones that we saw earlier. Yes, they have two sets now. So this is the brand gotcha. new. They were actually doing some of the first test runs on them when we were there in May. Oh, okay. So are they trying to recreate kind of like are they are they trying to recreate the same taste profile that the original stills were trying to do, or are they trying to create something new with new? Oh sets? no, absolutely the same. It's the exact same <laughs> still, a set of twins. Uh, gotcha. Just so they can make more, they're now going to be about three hundred and eighty to four hundred thousand liters this year. Well, okay. would have been this year. Uh, the distillery's been shut down for the last few weeks, so uh, not much going on with those stills right now. Gotcha. Let me just uh, we'll go back to that picture. So this is always cool because looking at looking at you know we can obviously tell a lot just by looking at you know, distillery stills right here. Um, and like you were saying, like your comment was, you know, these aren't, these aren't like mega, you know, you know, 50 foot tall stills, right? These are yeah. you pretty can zoom small. In, I think, on the, uh, zoom in on that red disc up there on the top of the, the wash still, if you can. I believe it's but, only like 35, 25, 3,500 liters. It, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little fuzzy, but uh, uh, I can... Yeah, it's so as far as it's it goes. Not, it's not a very big still. 
it's not this room is not massive so no it's not no it's not no it's not so tell us so tell us about kind of like uh um how still can it possibly affect the spirit and you know and the, the kind of character that kill holman is going for uh yeah i mean it 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 starts off and other than the hundred percent isla you know they're Mm -hmm. using some port ellen malt um just because they can't physically malt enough barley themselves to only produce from their barley um they had to supplement so as they grew they started getting some malt from port ellen and uh you know they just um it it all starts like from the very beginning when they get when they get their malt it's um yeah really really cool the way they do it how they take care of it um i i sent you a picture of the malting floor there uh, that, that. Was, that was a lot of fun yeah and um so they're malting this barley they they're peating it um but but the big thing where they really start doing things um unlike most other distilleries yep there you go I, yep. I tried to do that. That little cart weighs about 200 some pounds. It's not very oh, easy. Yeah. So well, they didn't tell me that until after I tried. So <laughs> so what they're doing here is your, your traditional floor malting. So talk about, you know, being traditional, right? Being traditional list, right? I mean, you know, who, who, you know, there's like maybe less than a dozen distilleries that's, that's, that's uh, uh, doing the floor malting. Well, yeah, <laughs> a little bit, Bowmore. Yeah, uh, Highland Park a little bit. Lefroy does a little bit. Springbank yeah. obviously does all their own. Um, yeah. But no, at Kilhoman, there's now two malting floors because they're trying to increase their 100% Isla production. Uh, this yeah. is the new one. So what happens in, in the malting process, and, and this is what most distilleries don't do because it's very time consuming. So you're going to get your barley, uh, yeah. the big tank in the back there. They'll fill that with the barley. They'll fill it with cold water. They'll let yep. it sit for a few days and wash it out a couple times, meaning drain it, put some fresh water in there. Yep, um, yep. And then once the barley is nice and saturated, they'll they'll drain the water. They'll dump the barley out and they'll spread yep. it on the floor to help it dry. So yep. um, this guy is is like Hercules that's dumping this barley. <laughs> he's, he's making it look like nothing. Hercules, Hercules. Barely get the thing. So, I don't know. And, you know, it's 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 ridiculous because you watch some of these videos of these people that makes this look so easy, you know. Yeah. And then like, you know, us city slickers, you know, uh, if we you know get in there and it's like we're like freaking out of breath after you know a couple steps. Yeah, he's and, one uh, of those he, guys that makes it look easy for sure. <laughs> so, so they'll dump they'll dump the barley out. Uh, they do two ton batches <laughs> at a time. And they'll dump it out, and it'll, it'll be a lot thicker when they dump it. And then the guy on the right who's actually doing the really hard work with the rake is yeah. going to spread it out so it's all nice and level. And yeah. when they're done, it actually only takes up about half the malting floor. And okay. then about every 12, 10 to 12 hours, they'll come out, and they'll re-rake it. One, to spread it and flip it. <laughs> uh, but also, you get a lot of matting um, as the barley dries and those – those sprouts are are growing they really get like woven and intertangled almost yeah. like a carpet they call it like the carpet effect so you have to go out there and physically rake that barley to keep it from just turning into one like barley glob that yeah that's- exactly yeah yeah and and and, uh-huh. and 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 just you know if you just think if you just think if you just think about how hard it is to just get that rake in there and start working this kind of like carpet of carpet of uh, barley you know, and trying to, you know, break it up and everything. It's, it's, uh, yeah. And somebody says, uh, yeah, they're hardy, they're hardy folk. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> not a thing yeah. I want. So, um, uh, but just, yeah, so after the floor malting, which, which kind of sets them apart, but the, to me personally, um, and people may agree or disagree with this, I think what makes Kilhoman great, uh, is their fermentation. So okay. they're, they're running on average about a hundred hour fermentation which okay. is about twice the time of most your distilleries. Yes. It's usually yeah. 48, maybe 52 hours they'll ferment. Uh, Kilhoman runs a four-day fermentation, 100 we hours. Don't any pictures. We don't have any pictures of the fermenters here, do we? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we don't. I could send you some. Yeah. They're pretty They're pretty basic looking. They, I mean, okay, they're, yeah. they're stainless, they're stainless yeah, steel. steel. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
So, yeah, I mean, everything when, when Anthony <laughs> built this story, uh, I think the only piece of equipment they bought that wasn't new was their mill to mill down their barley to yeah. go into fermentation. So, yeah. um, so what well, that so, super long fermentation, I, I think what it does, I mean, you guys obviously have all had kill home and you're here, uh, yeah. but I, I think what it does, this, this whiskey is the same PPMs as Ardbeg, as Lafroig, uh, yeah. as Leipzig. So th- this is 50 parts per million. This is heavily peated whiskey, but it gets such light, delicate floral notes and flavors and these yeah. the citrus and all the, all these flavors that until I started really getting into Kilhoman, you don't really find them in other whiskeys. And I, I think it has to do with that, that long fermentation it it eliminates a lot of the medicinal iodine qualities and really brings out a lot of flavor out of that barley yeah so that's that's i think what really makes a difference and then they're also taking a a little forward cut um they're they're taking a little heavier cut on the front end of the spirit um which you know as you know the beginning the the beginning of the distillation that of the hearts is where you're going to get those floral and those fruity yeah. notes and flavors. And, yeah. you know, the end of the distillation is where that heavy iodine medicinal kind of smoke, yeah. Yeah. smoke yeah. comes in. So by, by moving the cut a little bit forward, they brought out a lot more of these flavors and they eliminated a lot of that, that <laughs> iodine quality, which if you can see, I got a ton of Lefroig here. I don't mind Lefroig at all, but it, it's just <laughs> a different kind of heat that, that's coming. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, uh, I think, I think uh, that's what really sets them apart is, is the attention to detail on, on every little aspect of, of what they're doing. Even their wood program is uh, amazing what they're doing. So, yeah. So, uh, Sam's with us, I believe. And, uh, so is Josh, your colleagues here. Cheers and, guys. And, uh, uh, Josh made a comment or somebody, uh, Josh made a comment of, uh, 3,250 liters, but then somebody, I think Googled and said it was, it's actually 3,230 <laughs> on, on the wash still. You know, when I was there, I measured, I think it's 3,249. <laughs> no, really? really? No, I'm uh, but yeah, they're, they're not very big stills. They're small. There's lots of copper contact. They yeah. got the reflux ball in the in the spirit still, so they're they're really producing a nice oily full bodied whiskey without that super heavy harsh iodine that comes with Isla Pete. So yeah, so you know, um, so I have I have this piece right here, and uh, which actually lists I like to share. Uh, I'll share it with this um, as well here, um, but it's actually a list of just you know, brands that we're familiar with and the uh, PPM content of each. But okay. it's actually inter- it's actually interesting because, um, you know, you know, a lot of times people get really caught up on the PPMs things. But, you know, PPMs isn't like a kind of like, you know, uh, oh, here it is. Yeah, there it is. Right. It's, definitely, it's definitely not the end all of how people. <laughs> no, it's not. That's that's my point. Yeah, it's not an end all be all of. Okay, yes, this this this. Uh, you know, actually, you know what? Is that too? Is that too? Uh, kind of like. I don't want to put my face that close to the camera to read it. So. <laughs> yeah, I might have to. Uh, but like you said, I mean, you you look at some of the Octomore stuff yeah, out there. Yeah. Yeah. Three hundred parts per million. If if that was how you judged peatiness, you should be literally like eating a brick of at that point. So yeah, right. things like fermentation, the cuts off the still, things like that are ways that you can really kind of manipulate your parts per million. Also, yeah. Yeah. even something as simple as the time between uh, leaving the kiln and being ground up and fermented and put into the still, like that time period can even have a difference because – the longer that barley sits out of the kiln before you start milling it down and fermenting it, you're going to lose a lot of that, that smokiness and that PPM just from the air drying out the barley. And it, it just kind of lessens the, the, uh, peat impact. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, um, um, so I, I've had this conversation with so many, you know, uh, uh, experts in the field, of course, as well. 
And uh, people, people, you know, I think consumers are really caught up on the PPM thing. And uh, but a lot of times, you know, peop, like I, like you were saying, PPM. You know, I'm just I'm just gonna put this. I'm just gonna put this in the, uh, the comment section here. How about that? I'll just put it in the comment section because it's not it's not really showing up for some reason. <clears throat> uh, there you go. Everybody can look in the comments there. Um. But yeah, so uh, uh, yeah, so so we were talking about the the the, the PPM. So Kilholman coming at around twenty PPMs, you know, as as yeah, you know, if I'm if I did my research correctly, and they do have some higher peated uh, barley that they use from uh, that they get from uh, around fifty PPMs uh, from Port Ellen. <clears throat> is that correct? So the, the Port Ellen malt that they get is fifty PPMs. It's actually uh, from yeah. what I understand, the same um, specs that Ardbeg uses in the, with their barley. So same type, same PPM. Um, but anything from their malting floor, their barley that they grow there on Rockside Farm, that they malt and they put in the kiln to peat um, is all, yeah, 20, 25 parts per million. So anytime you you want a lower peat level kill home in, 100% Isla is, is where you got to go. Uh, the other whiskeys are all made from this Port Allen malt. Yeah. I am going to, this is what I'm going to do, because uh, I really want people to see this and people hopefully can see it now. Uh, can people see my entire screen here? They can, right? <clears throat> yeah, I can see it all moving there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So here it is, you know, so, uh, you know, Highland Park around 20, Kilman around 20 to 50, depending on, um, the expression it's 20 or 50 it's not like 30 45 it's yeah, either yeah 20 yeah. to 25 for their barley or 50 from the port ellen yeah yeah and we got arnaho yeah you know your bunahaven brookladi or more spring bank so spring bank you know talisker all but more all around 25 um coil 32 lagavulin etc cetera, etc cetera. and then you know you love your love for eggs and our bags around 45, 50, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the four, four malted, 80, and some of the Octomores are like over 100, some PPMs. And and uh, um, from what we know, I think people become essentially numb to the uh, to the, I, the the sense of peat after around 60, I think, PPMs. And so yeah, some, I mean, some, people, so some people will taste like 100 or 100 some PPM whiskey and then not really even feel like it's that high they may even you know taste it as being lighter in ppm just right, because right. it's that you, you know your, your senses just aren't able to process it you know <clears throat> all right and, so if you guys are all it's been an hour you guys hopefully are on your second dram by now um let me go <laughs> with a little str cask we were talking about this earlier nice so this is uh released uh last year and this was um it's really cool with these casks, what they're doing. Um, they're, they're taking these pretty much, if you guys are in the wine world, uh, they're, they're talking about them being tired and used up. Uh, the oak is no longer imparting tannin into the wine that goes in there. So they really have no use for them. Uh, yeah. And what happens is the, the cooperage in, that they're using will take these casks and they'll shave down a little bit of the inside and they'll then toast and hit it with a number four alligator char. And what it really does, it, it really reactivates the wood tannin in there. But even more importantly, it, it really caramelizes all the sugars. Yeah. And you, you get all of this. I, I like to call it virgin oak, but you don't get that spice and oak tannin that you do mm -hmm. out, of, out of a virgin oak. But you still get the really savory components, the, the sweetness and the texture and a lot of color as well is coming from these casks. So, yeah, yeah. And, and you do have a picture of some of the pea cutting over here, as you yep, can see. This was, uh, this was us out in the field, um, some free labor. So this was right behind the distillery. <laughs> yeah. um, the gentleman yeah. there um, with the same haircut as me with the blue shirt on is Isla Heads. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, so Isla Heads is the farm manager at Kilhoman. Huh, so he's okay. in he's the farm manager, huh? Farm. Yep. So he, uh, he showed us around the property and, had us digging some peat. Uh, Isla, if you couldn't figure it out, was born and raised on Isla. Um, I'm sure you know Mickey. Head. 
Uh, Mickey Hens at Ardbeg is his cousin, his brother. They're they're somehow related. Um, so a lot of whiskey uh, heritage running through the Heads family on Isla. Um, but yeah. yeah, so he took us out there. We dug some peat. I'm left handed, so they were all laughing at me trying to dig <laughs> peat because I'm the wrong way. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. They they don't uh, they don't dig all their peat from on their property though. Um, okay. I'll be honest with you here. They are their neighbors are peat farmers, and they dig peat yeah. and they sell it to people all over Isla. So it is literally Isla peat. It's on the same. It's just the next plot of property over. Right. Like. If they owned more land, it would be their peat, basically. But even so, cutting peat, it, this I is mean, yeah, but even cutting peat when, you, when, you, when you did it. <laughs> it you know, what, what's worse, yeah, you know, uh, rolling, you know, uh, uh, spreading out that barley or cutting peat, huh? <clears throat> cutting peat is way worse. Uh, I, Ilo <laughs> was telling us, as, as everyone was laughing at me trying to cut peat, he was telling us the story of, of growing up on Isla. And when yeah. he when he was when he was a kid, he said it, when there was no school going on, he woke up in the morning, <laughs> went out to the field with his dad, dug peat all day, and then came home at the end of the day for dinner. Like that's that's yeah, what they you're, did. You're you're like you know we're like sissy men to them, you know. Oh yeah, he made <laughs> it look really easy, just like the guy on the molting floor. <laughs> and he was like, I can do this, you know. Um, you also yeah. have a couple of these pictures of some of these, uh, I guess. Yeah, this uh, is really cool here. So this is, um, let's go to the church first. Okay, let's go to the church first. There we go. Uh, we got the Celtic go cross here with us. Yeah, yeah. So this is, uh, this is a very old church. There's no roof. There's only like three and a half sides to it. And big cemetery around there on the property. Um, the sheep wander around there. Uh, yeah. really cool old church just off the, the farm's property. Um, I, I'm guessing they named the distillery after the church. Uh, okay. so we went to check this out with Isla and I had seen pictures of this Kilhoman cross, which was the, the one that you had in the previous photo. Okay. This one. So you should have two photos of it. Stay on this here. So I, I went and I was okay. looking specifically for this, this headstone to see, you know, to see it and get a photo and I'm yeah. over there and you see the little baby sheep there on the left by the head. Oh yeah. You're right there. A little Easter egg there. You see that? Yep. Okay. There you go. So, so baby sheep's hanging out and, um, oh, there you go. look at that. <laughs> yeah. Looks like a lot of fun, right? Nice and peaceful. So I go up and I'm taking a couple photos of this cross and we had the rest of our sales team was there with us, um, uh, from the U S and, um, our guy that does, uh, like Colorado, Arizona, Brian DeVore, um, <clears throat> photos. So I'm not paying attention to anything. And I got these great photos and all of a sudden from the other side of the church, I hear Brian go, Jared, you better get out of there, get out of there now. And I'm like, what the <laughs> wrong with Brian, why is he doing this? So if you flip to the other photo of the cross I gave you, uh, what I we... didn't, what I didn't notice. This one. Yep. What I didn't notice, if you look behind the cross to the right, <laughs> was, was mama sheep hanging out with baby sheep. And oh, apparently, I little, apparently I was a little too close for comfort because she stood oh, up. There, from, oh, man, there you go. That's she stood up from wherever she was at and was staring me down. And I didn't know what to do. I slowly started backing away. <laughs> Fortunately, she didn't try to kill me. But uh, I got to cool. thank Brian for it's possibly cool saving because- my life. Yeah, you know, the, the the sheep looks a lot more scary because it's all wool. You know, it, it makes it look a lot bigger and, and, and buffer. But if you if you uh, uh, uh you know shear the sheep, then it's pretty much pretty much looks like a chihuahua. You know, <laughs> I still wasn't going to test it out though. There's no way I was going to test it out. I'm already in a cemetery. I don't need to be buried there. So, so that, that was a lot of fun though. Seeing that church, um, it's right down by Machir Bay. It's a really really awesome. So if we go back to this, the first stone that you showed, um, and this is the really cool. Stone. Yeah, uh, Travis, <clears throat> you'll appreciate this quite a bit. Yep. So Travis, if you guys will appreciate this for you, Travis. Yep, this one's for Travis and everybody else that likes drinking at some of the best whiskey bars uh, in the country and around the world. Yeah. So these are these are the Comreich stones for the church. Okay. So uh, Comreich is sanctuary, um, okay. and there was. There's three, three of these. 
that are around the church that kind of mark the property line. And uh-huh. they call them Tom Reich stones. It's like the, the church would offer sanctuary to people. Mm. So if you, I'm not going to say if you're on the run from somebody, but if, if you're, if you're in a situation where you need somewhere to stay, that's protected, you would yeah. go. And once you got past these Comreich stones, you were, you were on the church's property, you were safe. And uh, it, it's pretty cool. And Kilhoman actually, I'm going to say two years ago now, um, we're going to have the third Comreich release coming out. So okay. Comreich, Comreich is a special bottling. Uh, the first year they did one. Second year they did one. I believe they're going to do two this year. So it'll be batch three and batch four. And what it is, is it's three, four casks uh, selected by Anthony Wills himself, married together. And it is to be sold exclusively in Kilhoman on-premise accounts around the country. Oh, so this, okay. is, this is something you don't find in liquor stores. You don't, you hopefully shouldn't find at auction. Um, th- yeah. This is a bottling that's meant, this is a bottling that's meant to be in bars for Kilhoman fans, something very special that you don't have to go out and try to search for it um, to be able to drink a really special Kilhoman. Um, I know Jack Rose is one of the accounts. Um, so they, they had it. They always sell out pretty quickly. Um, yeah. But in, to give you an idea, in my six states, that's my only Comreich account. I think there is oh, about okay. 20 of them in the U.S. total. Gotcha. So keep, keep your eyes so out. Something special. Something special for you guys. Yeah. And that's uh, will be coming out, uh, I think, within the next month or two, hopefully, if all this yeah. stuff uh, clears up and goes away. Yeah. But uh, really special bottling. A lot of people look for it. Don't try to buy it. You can only find it at bars. Uh, the bottles are actually etched. So if bottles do pop up, they have a way to track where, where it came from. Uh, okay. Uh, and, uh, Interesting. Where, where okay. You so you guys, to, so you guys are already proactive and proactive in, uh, uh, in the security of the bottles also. Yeah. It's meant to be something special for bar guests to enjoy at accounts that really support Kilhoman. So yeah. there's the barley fields, the majority of them. Yeah. Yeah. That's very nice. And uh, uh, and more more fields. Yep, that's uh, that's actually from the road as you pull up to the distillery. Okay, so that's yeah, the, uh, I can see the sign there. The open road. open times nine forty five a.m. every day. <laughs> yep. So the, uh, yeah, the distillery's back, set in those trees. Uh, that's one yeah. of the new warehouses they just built recently at the distillery. Very nice. So very nice. That was a lot of fun. They wouldn't let me run the forklift though. <laughs> why would I have had to do with a, a green finger hanging around my neck with a glass of whiskey, but they <laughs> wouldn't let me use the forklift. So <laughs> not not OSHA approved. <laughs> nope, definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the bottling hole. So yeah, they're uh yeah. like you said, barley to bottle, farm to glass. They they even do their own bottling on site. Which this is guy over here looks important, important because he has uh khakis on and a and a sweater. That's so. actually Anthony Wills, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I was about to say, but is that Anthony? Because I mean, I was like, this guy from the back looks like Bill Gates, and, That's uh, Anthony, yeah. That's <laughs> and I was like, that must be Anthony or somebody that looks important because you know, important people wear khakis. <laughs> well, and I, I'm wondering what he's doing in the bottling warehouse is in the bottling hall as well. He he's either telling someone good job or he's not very happy about something. <laughs> yeah, I was say, I was like, good job, guys. Good job, uh, to give you an idea, though, like they'll they'll do any Anthony will do anything uh, just like James, Peter and George, the kids. Um, yeah. So we had um, we had an impex call um, with James Wills last week. And, uh, you know, he actually kind of get kind of got trapped on Isla. He was there visiting when all this this stay in place went down. So he was staying at his parents house on Isla. Oh. Meanwhile, his, his wife and kid are not on Isla. Oh, and wow. uh, they, they were at the distillery running the bottling line. Just oh, the two oh. of them, the only ones at the distillery. They went there. Uh, they bottled all the Lock Gorm for us. So Lock yeah. Gorm 2020 was bottled uh, last week and will be very shortly on its way to the U.S. But James and Anthony bottled the whole run because the distillery shut down. There's no employees coming in. Yeah. They went to the distillery and did it themselves, which is really wow. kind of kind of cool they're not afraid to roll the sleeves up and get dirty still (laughs) that is cool that is cool um sam says uh comrade 2020 is landing in the u.s at the end of the month josh says comrade 2 is immensely delicious 
Fountainhead in Chicago will have it. Yeah. Um, and the Delilah's too. Yeah. I think there's uh, a couple in New York, Joshua, perhaps. Yeah, maybe. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure somewhere in New York. Probably probably like, I don't know. Um, yeah. Flat I don't, I don't know. Any of those big, big whiskey bars in New York? Uh, oh, yeah, here's back to the sales again. Uh, actually, you know, somebody did ask a question earlier that I wanted to address as well since we're back on this picture. Um, uh, I believe it was David uh, talks about uh, how do they get such live floor character from such short stills? So, I mean, traditionally, I mean, shorter stills is supposed to produce a heavier spirit, right? Yeah, um, but, they, but, but you can also run those stills, you know, slowly and, and create more uh, copy interaction. And, you know, so uh, and plus the fermentation, we talked about that too. a hundred some hour fermentation. So you're you're going to get much more fruity, floral, estery, because the more longer the fermentation, the more esters. And uh, somebody did mention something about brewing mashing is the most underappreciated part of the whiskey making process. Uh, and I, I tend to agree with that just because like, you know, your brewing and mashing is such an important part. And a lot of, a lot of home brewers get that. And we had also some home brewers that start up distilleries and they really respect that fermentation process. Um, um, but, but the fermentation, you know, you're going to get that kind of fruitiness and just, just so people understand that, you know, your average fermentation in Scotch whiskeys is probably going to be like anywhere from 48 to 72 hours, you know? Um, so you know, uh, you guys are taking a much longer time. You're taking, you know, 100 plus, 100 hours exactly or 100 plus? On average, it's about 100. Sometimes yeah. a little less, sometimes a little more, but the, the average is 100 hours, yeah. Yeah, and then and that, and that's another, and, and actually that I feel that's really related to kind of also the craft or the the kind of the, 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 the small family owned craft uh, the distilleries can do just because time is money, you know? And then so, you know, a lot of these distilleries, you know, going all the way a hundred hours, you also have, you know, other, other risks of bacterial infection, et cetera, et cetera. Um, um, but waiting that extra two or three days to start distilling. Cause a lot of these distilleries are just running and pumping out alcohol and to wait to, to, to drag out that, that production uh, time is, is also t costly. Right. Um, but if you're like, if you're like kill home and you want to do it right, then you want to do it right. Right. Yeah. And well, you know, and like I said, you know, we were talking earlier, it, it is owned by Anthony and, and his family. Yeah. And yeah, and he's rolling up his sleeves, but he doesn't have his... anybody saying, hey, you, you've you got to produce yeah, exactly. this. Our stock needs to be worth this much money. Yeah, he, yeah, he's yeah. doing it the way he wants and he, he's doing it right. I mean, their, yeah. their wood program's amazing. Um, they're, here, here's some fancy words I made up. So they're, uh, they're <laughs> a single source provenance for all of their casks. They yeah, can okay, yeah, there you go. Yep, yeah. Provenance is definitely back to, uh, back to one supplier of the cask. Uh, their their ex bourbon barrels all come direct from Buffalo Trace. They're oh yeah, old. here we go. We got one right here. We got the picture right there here. Right? Here it is. Uh, when we were digging around the warehouse, I, I looked at the end Look of the cask and I'm like, oh, check that out. Uh, a lot of Buffalo Trace mash number two, some stag. Um, they're wow. using mainly the Buffalo Trace single barrel projects. Okay. So Elmer, Eagle, or Elmer, Blanton's, uh, Stag. Yeah. So they're they're using top quality, quality casks. Yeah. They're shipping them whole, so they don't need a cooper to reassemble them. Oh uh, so wow! Okay, yeah, another quality. another big cost, right? So like breaking them down and shipping the staves over is obviously a lot cheaper. It takes up a lot less space and than 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 than, than uh, uh, um, um, shipping the whole cask over. So another another just kind of like little, you know, little touch. Those little so this those little things like little floor malting, you know, like taking your time with the fermentation, sourcing the cask. It's not always it's not always just like one thing that makes a whiskey great. It's little things that people care about and people like Anthony care about that make a whiskey great. You know. Yeah, and with with Kill Home and it, it's like every every time you look at something, it, it has something like that in there. It, it's yeah, going, going the extra step to try to get the most quality you can out yep. of what you're doing. So uh, sherry casks all come from a bodega called Miguel Martin. Uh -huh. um, their sauterne casks are all Chateau Ikem. Don't ask me how he ended up with those, but he only oh. uses Chateau Ikem sauterne barrels. Um, the port casks are from Symington. 
a uh, little less exclusive. Symington's a pretty big porthouse. Yeah. Uh, Grand's Dow's, Taylor Fladgate, a lot of the <laughs> But, I mean, he's getting each type of cask from only one supplier. So yeah. he, he can guarantee what's coming in, the good quality, and it just it makes for a better product in the end. Yeah, it's a, like I said, it's the little things, you know. It's really, it's really those little things. And here we have a picture of the first cask, the very first yep. cask, December fourteenth. Very nice, very nice. We were just talking about that. I wonder, uh, did, did they? I'm curious. Did they? Did they uh, let you kind of, you know, go go in there and you know, uh, 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 thief a little out or? Well, so. so. <laughs> Or are they uh, the saving picture, that for like a special release in like twenty years or something? Or well, the uh, the the picture I didn't send you was was probably another one of the coolest uh, parts of the visit to the distillery. Um, ah, okay. So this is right when you walk into one of their original warehouses on site. Uh huh. And like, I literally walked in the door, and this thing's staring at me right in the face, and I'm like, "Oh my god, why is this here? Like, this to be in the vault, like." guarded by a dragon that breathes fire like why is this just sitting right next to this open door and yeah. so it's pretty cool to see it and to the right of this is is a table set they have the casks all piled up in like like a u-shape and there's a table in there and that's where we went in uh we tasted a bunch of samples we picked out a bunch of casks that we either have or are going to bring in uh for impex but it was just like to see this sitting there i'm not gonna lie i did ask i'm like can we just try to, <laughs> they were like, no. I couldn't even get the whole question out. They're like, no, you can't taste it. Oh, man. Like, no. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, it's, you know, that's, that's the first question. I, 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 reason, but you got to ask, you know? Yeah, so, let, uh, yeah. Let me, uh, let me just get like a little cotton swab and just, you know, like dip it in there. And like, you know, so to my knowledge, there's <laughs> only been, uh, there's only I mean, been one thing. I mean, drawn from my tongue just a little bit. Yeah, the um, other than the Angels share, um, when John McClellan, who was a really awesome guy, who was their distillery manager, he passed away uh, from cancer, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, man, might have been five or six years ago now. It's been a little while. But he, um, when he passed away, um, kind of as a thank you to the, the people who were taking care of him and the hospitals that were treating him and the doctors and stuff, um they hand filled one bottle out of this cask and put oh, it up wow. okay. put it up for auction on their website um <clears throat> cast strength nice wooden box and all i believe right. it sold for ten thousand pound yeah so, yeah that's nice that, uh, to my knowledge that's the only whiskey other than maybe anthony tasting it that's ever come out of that cask wow so, wow well, that was, that was a nice thing that they did. And uh, so since we're on the topic of casks, uh, tell us about what uh, what are some of the single casks that's going to be coming out. And then I think people want to know about it. Yeah. So I've, I've spent my uh, quarantine days um, feverishly, feverishly trying to make this. <laughs> and uh, thanks to some really awesome accounts. Um, yeah. What happened was um, Kilhoman actually ran out of peak. In 2011, uh -huh. 2012, for a short period of time. Interesting, and interesting. So what they did, they've still got this this floor malting and this barley going on, and so they just uh, they dried it without peat. They just used coal in the kiln to to dry the barley out, and okay. uh, they ended up uh, running it through the stills. They filled 75 casks of unpeated Kilhoman spirit. Okay, did you um, say they used coal specifically? Coal. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. So there's probably still going to be a little bit of that smokiness. There's still going to be some well, some phenolics there. So unfortunately, we'll that's, never know. That's a good thing, I think, right? Well, unfortunately, we'll never know because um, at the time they only had the one set of stills. And what happened was, even though they're running this unpeated spirit between uh -huh. the spirit safe and the condenser, the pipes it runs through in the holding tank where yeah, it waits yeah, yeah. to get put into cask weren't actually cleaned out. So it did pick okay. up a very small amount of peat. It's detectable okay. on the panel, but it's like very, very minuscule Dang. amount of peat in the whiskey. So okay. um, I was lucky enough to be talking to Sam on the right day and in a good okay. mood. Thank and, you, Sam. And I said, Sam, I said, I, I need to find a way to get this into the U S and he said, have fun. So that's what I've been doing for the last three weeks. Um, <laughs> I, I went down to DC 
last week. Uh, I sat down with Bill Thomas at Jack Rose. We tasted through the samples and, you know, I was, I was excited. I'm like, yes, Jack Rose is on board. Hopefully they don't buy it all because everybody's going to want some. Yeah. And we tasted one uh, aged in X bourbon that was distilled in 2011. So it's, uh, it's now a nine-year-old whiskey. And okay. we tasted a uh, Sherry Hogshead, which oh, was okay. just in 2012, which is now an eight-year-old whiskey. And okay. um, they were basically both so good that Bill Thomas decided he wanted to buy both of them. Wow. So nice. We actually have two casks coming in. Um, we just picked them out. Uh, they will be available uh, to members of your Philly Whiskey Society through one of your accounts uh, yeah, that give yeah. you guys a club discount. So no worries there. I've got that taken uh, awesome. care of. Uh, awesome. I think there are about 30 bottles of each that are going to them. Um, okay. The majority of it is going to go to Jack Rose. It's going to have their name selected by. So they right. bought a good <laughs> chunk of those tasks. But um, we will have a list. I think there's uh, six or seven accounts between Delaware, Maryland, and DC that will be getting it. And gotcha. uh, there are a few that ship around the country. So yes. if you guys are looking nice. for, uh, feel free to send myself or Impex or Alex, if you don't mind an email and I can uh, sure. point you guys in the right direction. Once it gets here, uh, I'll make the announcement. We'll, we'll get it out there on social media, a list of yeah. the accounts where you can get it from just yeah. to make it easy for everybody. But uh, first unpeated kill homans in, in the States. It's a pretty cool thing. So, yeah. Yeah. And, but then just with a little kiss of Pete, you know, a little so kiss that's of Pete. actually what we were looking at, maybe calling it kiss of Pete, or I wanted to, call <laughs> okay. it, I wanted to call it diet kill homan one fifth of Pete. <laughs> but that's not really, that's not really okay to put on there. That's just me getting creative. So <laughs> but yeah, so they'll, they'll be coming probably June, July ish. So we're, nice. we're working on that. So. Well, I, I'm definitely, I'm definitely, uh, I'm definitely interested in the, uh, in some of the bottles, and I'm sure um, if you guys are, you know, uh, stay tuned to my page and or Impex's page, I'm sure um, you'll get that information right away. Um, but yeah, so if, if Jared, once once Jared, you guys get the information, you know, let me know, and I'll post it on my page, and then people can, uh, and especially the Philadelphia Food Society. Uh, I'll be sure to share with them and, uh, um, you know, cause there's only 30 bottles you said like, uh, well, for, uh, for, yeah, I mean, there was, uh, that one score. To, right. So total, total overall, you know, out of the ex bourbon were 240, 250 bottles for the country, uh, out of the Sherry Hogshead, maybe 300. Yeah. And yeah. A, a good chunk of that is going directly to Jack Rose. Can so, you can you recall the kind of the taste profile? Can you kind of uh, describe it or share that with us? Or do you remember what they tasted like? I do. Uh, it was quarantine time, so I tasted those samples, <laughs> bought some lunch from Jack Rose, and got the heck out of there, man. I wasn't sticking around. So. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, they. Um, I mean, it, what was really cool about it was that as soon as you smelled it and tasted it, you knew it was Kilhoman. Yes. Okay. Like it, it had still all of that nice bright fruit and the citrus and, and all of those flavors, but they kind of went a little longer on the palate. Yeah. With, with that absence of peat, you kind of, you get those initial front end of the palate flavors occurring yeah. through the mid palate into the finish. And then you just get this little soft, like wispy hint of peat at the very end oh, of it. That sounds lovely. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, really, it's almost it's almost like it was finished in a peated cask, which it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, it's almost okay, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Really light, like that. Yeah. Peat too. So it yeah. was really cool. But like I said, what amazed me that I wasn't expecting was you still got that kill home and distillery. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, distillery character. Obviously, you know the fermentation is is probably you're you're, you're probably you're getting more because the. The peat and the smoke, I imagine, is, you know, kind of takes away, it, it, in, in a way it adds to it, but it also takes away from the actual spirit it's itself, itself, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So in this case, you're going to get a much more vibrant 
kind of uh, a, a taste profile just because you're going to taste that kill home and spirit and the fermentation and the spirit and the the stills talking to you and without the distraction of the peat. Uh, and then but then that peat's going to talk to you just a little bit uh, and, and give you that little kiss of peat at the end there. And, I, and, I, and that sounds really that sounds really great. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Somebody says now you're just playing with my emotions. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll get you some. It's yeah, we gotta get some. We gotta get some. Or, hey, or, man. or for those of those, you know, because there's several people here from Maryland here. Um, you just go to Jack Rose and just go go, go uh, uh, grab a drink at Jack Rose and they'll have it right eventually. Yeah, you you Maryland guys. Uh, You'll you'll be able to find it at uh, State Line Liquors, Petite okay. Cellars, uh, okay, yeah. out in the City, and uh, DC. You'll be able to find it at Ace Beverage, Potomac. Um, okay. Nick Pearson's is going to get a couple cases of it, uh, and then up in Delaware, we're going to give it to Frank because he's your only uh, participating guy I know of down here in the area. That's gotcha. part of uh, your club discount, so. Nice, I wanted to make nice. you got some for you guys to get your hands on. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, thank you. Uh, a couple, another question. Patrick uh, from Clona Kilty also asked, "How they, how do they run out of peat?" Uh, that's a good question because when I first, any of you that have been to any of my tastings, when uh, James Wills or or Peter was actually with us, um, they do tell a story about you know kind of catching the kiln on fire a little bit and perhaps burning it down. <laughs> Uh, like three or four years into production, but we're looking, we're looking pre 2010 when this yeah. alleged incident may or may not have happened. So <laughs> I thought maybe, you know, the kiln was inoperable. Yeah. I was going to say it was on yeah. fire. So they were just running on peated stuff. Um, but no, I mean, it, it could have just been, they didn't plan right between orders yeah. and now we're waiting for the next shipment. And Anthony's like, well, I need to make whiskey. Let's keep going. We don't need peat. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, who really knows? But yeah, for for one reason or the other, they they ran out of peat for for a short period of time. I mean, seventy five casks isn't a lot. No, your, your big distilleries yeah. that's like a morning run before lunch. Yeah. You know, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. So home and it's it's a few months worth of whiskey. I th I would think so. Yeah, yeah. Well, so we so we got a, well, we got a, about fifteen minutes. We I usually end the end the program at around ten fifteen uh, ten thirty. Uh, so tell us about you know um, you know maybe some things, some innovative stuff coming, anything new in terms of Kilman in the future, uh, 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 any kind of uh, just uh, you know maybe you know cool gossip or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I I, I kind of <laughs> let the cat out of the bag a little bit earlier for those of you that weren't here at the beginning um this is our, our 10th anniversary at impex uh, of being yeah. the importer of kill home and we were the first ones to bring it in the u.s and like i said fortunately yeah. you guys have done your job and we i would like to think have done our job as an importer and they're happy so they've continued to use us they haven't left and gone to someone else and yeah. uh we're celebrating our 10th anniversary this year and like i said we're we're bottling a 14-year-old ex-bourbon aged Kilhoman single cask uh, to commemorate yeah. Impex mm -hmm. and Kilhoman's 10th anniversary. It is, to my knowledge, the oldest whiskey ever bottled by Kilhoman. Oh, um, wow. Okay. Yeah, wow. The distillery is only 15 years old. You can't really yeah, get right. more than 14, especially if you go, I told you, from 2005, if you're not buying one of those 12 casks, the uh, yeah, yeah. you can get from Kill Homans 2006. <laughs> it's a 14 year old. So wow. I think I think remember seeing the cask number. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, when Kill Homan does a single cask, and this is an old one, so it's not yeah. handwritten anymore. But when they do a single cask, they put the cask number on there. Uh, okay. So it'll be nice. it'll be the cask number. And the year slash the year it was distilled. So wow. the one we got, the one we got was, uh, I believe, cask number eighteen. Okay. Which was distilled in two thousand six. <clears throat> okay, so only probably yeah. like hundred, hundred some, hundred some bottles. I mean, I mean, with angel yeah, share so and take, bourbon cask and. But you take you take you know if you made twelve if you filled twelve casks in 05, 
and uh-huh. then we just we just picked out the 18th cask that you filled in 2006. This was literally okay. the 30th cask filled at Kilhoman. Okay. Oh wow. It, okay. It's like it's like one of their first ones. It's really awesome to yeah. be able to get our hands on it. Um, we've also got for those of you that are fans that were lucky enough to have the small batch number one. Uh-huh. Uh, this is a really cool project. So what it is, it's uh, it's about 1,200 bottles, give or take. Uh, per batch. Uh, this was batch number one. And what happens is they basically do a mock here bay. So yeah. they're going to, uh, they're going to take three bourbon casks and a sherry cask. They're going to marry them together. They're going to cut it down to 46%, which is their standard bottling strength. But okay. then what they do is they'll take one cask of something at cast strength and dump it in there before bottling. They'll marry oh, okay. it. By- for a little while so you've got like three four casks of bourbon and sherry cut down normal 46 percent machier bay style heavy on the bourbon but then we throw in another cask and that yeah. cask goes in cast strength and it ends up being like about a third to a quarter of what is in that what yeah. is in that so the first one we did is port and it, it is absolutely stunning, stunning whiskey. Uh, <laughs> nice. It came out at forty-eight and a half percent after they added the cast strength barrel to the to the forty-six percent. Um, batch two will be coming shortly. It's a Madeira cask we put in there. Oh, okay, Madeira, nice, nice. So, yep. so uh, no, we, we, I had a question about the uh, the ten year anniversary release. You said that was going to be mm-hmm. a single cast. Is that going to be a cast strength or is it going to be, you know, 50 or 46? Or... Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Single casks are always bottled at cast strength. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. So then, so then, so then the whole, the whole country is only just going to get one cask. Yep. Uh, okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's what, like I, like I was saying with angel share and everything, it's, it, and, you, and you said it was a bourbon cask, right? Yeah. So hopefully it's there's 200 bottles. Yeah. Hopefully so there's 200 bottles. There's probably less bottle. than that. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna unfortunately guess and say there's probably only, I don't know, maybe 150 bottles of it. Yeah, I'm about to say 100 some bottles. Uh, at least, uh, you know, you know, if you guys aren't diluting, it's cask strength, bourbon cask. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then so then probably in this area, well, you know, in in your territory, you might only get like maybe 10 bottles, and or or yeah, maybe right. I always I always push 30 is my magic number. <laughs> Sam is still on here. Are you still on here, Sam? <laughs> yeah. so 30, 30 is a magic number. Something that comes in really limited. I, I want to get 30 bottles. It's five cases. But <laughs> yeah. in a case like this, yeah, you know, I'll probably end up for, for Delaware, Maryland, and DC. I'll probably, I don't know, 12, 18 bottles. Something yeah, like yeah. About to say. Yeah. Wow. Okay. You know, it'll be wow. a few and far between. I always take pre orders, though. So all you got to do is get a hold of me and I'll try to make it happen for you. So that's not a big deal. All right. Well, I want one. (laughs) I I figured you would. Yeah. Yeah. I need an excuse to get back up there and drink with you. So uh, I'll I'll make sure I find a way to get you one. I'll crack it open with the club, with the group. And then, you know, people can, you know, you know, because not everybody's going to get a bottle, obviously. And so people can get a sample at least. Yeah. That's the Uh, the beauty. And and also the really frustrating part about Kill Homan is, is, you know, we've got, they so limited. The first, the first couple of drams we had tonight, the Machir Bay and the San Egg uh, are kind of the staples of the distillery. Machir yeah. Bay, Exponent for Aging, San Egg, mostly Sherry. And that's really yeah. the only thing that differentiates them. Same age, same ABV. Um, but everything else from Kilhoman, even the Loch Gorm, the 100% Isla, they only come out once a year. You know, they, they only release 10 to 15,000 bottles. We get, I don't know, a thousand, fifteen hundred maybe for the country. And it's yeah. just it's really frustrating that they're making such good whiskey and they just they can't make enough of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To, to kind of keep everyone happy. Um, so you know, they they did port, they did Madeira, they they've done these really cool bottlings, they've done rum cask. Yeah. And um, a lot of times it's it's just really hard to get. There's just not enough of it being produced and bottled to to meet the demand that's out there so so uh so i also run a whiskey club uh in taiwan um and uh, have a team you know with me and my team run a whiskey club you know, here in taiwan and we actually are getting on board with a local 
uh, uh, liquor store that's doing a, uh, a single cask of the Kill Holman pork cask, a uh, pork oh, cask Kill Holman. Nice. So I'll have to, I'll have to, I'll have to grab a sample. We can uh, share that eventually. Um, Feel free to grab me a whole bottle if you want. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, sure. Okay. If you want, well, yeah. I'll, 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 well, when it comes in, I'll let you know. Sam is is still on, and uh, he did chime in, and he says, "RRP two hundred twenty for the tenth anniversary cask. These angels were pretty greedy." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it, but he, he, he avoided your question about getting thirty bottles. So he did. He's good. At that. <laughs> that's why. I, that's why I work for him, not him working for me. He's, he's much better at that kind of stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Well, does anyone have any questions or anything like that? You know, uh, we're coming up on ten thirty, and uh, um, you know, we're pretty much. Also, people who ask for twenty five percent tariff are greedy as well. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, they they are. Uh, if you guys didn't know, though, there has been no price increase on Kill Homan. Um, okay. Yeah. So initially, it was kind of a big story in the news uh, last October when these tariffs hit twenty five percent on single malt. Yeah. Uh, for Scotland and, and Northern Ireland. And um, at the time, Sam and, and wines and like wines and like uh, cognac and stuff like that, I believe. Right. No, nope. it, it didn't even affect Welsh single malt. The Pandaren guys were jumping up yeah. and down. Like, thank oh, God yeah, we're yeah. in the Wales. They forgot about us. But there, uh, there was there was a tax on wine. So some of these like uh, 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 European right. wines got 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 slapped with the tax in because I have some distributor friends and they're like you know because you you have some wines that they were maybe selling for like eight bucks or something like that or ten bucks or whatever they were kind of already your budget wines and then you see like a two or three dollar jump you're they're they're priced out of they're you know just going to be priced out you know so well yeah and with with my long retail background I can tell you that's that's the biggest thing that'll kill somebody if if you're an eight dollar wine <laughs> yeah and you, and you go to a ten or twelve dollar wine it really really hurts if you're a yeah. sixty dollar bottle of whiskey and you go to a sixty five dollar bottle of whiskey, yeah, it's not that as bad. Yeah, it's hurt, but it's not too bad. Um, but what what happened was Sam and Anthony decided that um, to continue kind of the success that we've had here in the U.S. Yeah. with all oh. these awesome Kilhoman fans that are supporting the distillery and buying the whiskey. Yeah, uh, yeah. they decided that they deserve better, and so it's being split the tariff between impex and kill and no price increase is being passed on to our distributors or, or our customers. Thank um, you. So, you know, that's, 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 that's a, you know, a appreciation for all the fans that's show to show appreciation to all the fans out there. Right. Yeah. And uh, you know, there, there's plenty of other companies that are much larger than impex that could have done this, that did not have not yeah. will not. Um, yeah. And to take it a step farther, I found out a few weeks ago uh, because the first quarter was over and I'm waiting. All right, here we go. Let's see the price increase. Um, Sam and Anthony also decided that they're going to keep it at least for another quarter now with no okay. price. increase. So we should Very be nice. good. Uh, hopefully this this these casks get in in time before this the end of the second quarter and, and we can get it at a really good price still. Um, but, but, you know, it's just something to show you that like between Anthony and his distillery and, and yeah. how much he really just wants to make great whiskey and he wants people to drink his whiskey. Yeah. No. And he's willing to, to, you know, swallow 12 and a half percent uh, yeah. of a tariff just to keep people drinking his whiskey. It's better to, it's better to make in the long run than it is to profit in the short run. So they're, yeah, they're yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah. Better. And that's something, you know, so support, you know, like I said, you know, support your, you know, your small distilleries, you know, and uh, support, uh, you know, these uh, uh, in independent also in support independent distilleries. Right. Even yeah. even though Kilman has been around for a while, but also just in uh, here in the United States, you know, we have a lot of great distilleries and people are trying to do the right thing. Um, and somebody did ask, uh, uh, how is the coronavirus affecting the industry in Isla? Uh, so I was pretty much like everywhere else. They're shut down. Um, yeah. Did I know of none of the the distilleries are are operational unless yeah. they're making spirit or sanitizer or something like that. Um, but there is no whiskey being produced. Again, there's 
we touched on it earlier when I told you the sheep story. I mean, there's there's only three thousand people on island. Yeah. And yeah. So it's it's very sparsely populated. Yeah. Um, Everybody's it, already, uh, you know, social distancing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, like they, they social distance for a living because it's like, you know, 700 yards to your closest neighbor. But um, yeah, it, it's not yeah. like it's not wiping out the island. There's not like. No, right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Island or anything. They're already social distance from the mainland, you know, really. Right. And they're basically just kind of sure. like you said, in Taiwan, like nobody in. If you need to yeah, leave, leave. Yeah, yeah. yeah, coming yeah. back kind of thing. So, Travis asks any info on the next U.S. small batch release, and I think Sam's replying. He's uh, he'll be posting the info on it next week. Yeah, like I said, I believe it's a Madeira cask that we added <laughs> to the mix, as opposed to a port cask, and yeah. it, it should be in pretty soon here. Um, yeah. Arrival times are kind of screwed right now with all this yeah. this stuff going on. It takes a little while longer to get things bottled. Obviously, I told you Anthony and James are the two of them there, like bottling stuff themselves. None of the employees yeah. are coming to the distillery. So Pat- it takes a little longer to get bottled. It takes a little longer to ship. It takes a little longer to get through customs. So it, it should be here sometime in the summer, I believe. But all Sam right. would never. I would. Very nice. And uh, Patrick says respect for the uh, pricing decision. So, you know, thank you guys for that. And um, and that pretty, pretty much is about it. Do, is there anything uh, uh, you want to add, Jared? No, man. I just uh, thanks for having me here. It's been awesome to uh, come on here and, and drink a little yeah. bit with you guys and tell you a little bit more about Kilhoman. Uh, I think yeah. it's one of the coolest, uh, most unique stories um uh, of somebody putting up a distillery with certain ideals in mind and kind of not not giving in to the status quo and and doing what he wants to do how he wants to do it when he wants to do it and, and making a really great product in the process yeah, so, yeah. Thank you guys out there and just just keep drinking kill Homan and we'll keep bringing you cool stuff from him <laughs> yeah Great. yeah 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 exactly and thanks for sharing those cool pictures jared and uh oh, you know we got you know we got a cool in-depth look you know people are saying thank you to you and us both and uh people really enjoyed it and uh like i said this broadcast will still be available online you know feel free to share with your friends and uh uh, and share the uh, whiskey love and uh and uh, share the kill home and love absolutely absolutely (laughs) thank you for having me on alex i appreciate that yeah this is awesome you know this is great you know i think just two two guy two whiskey lovers talking about whiskey i think this it's it's just it's just fun it's just enjoyable and it and and you and you get to put on your watch and your shirt and your no first time in two weeks i had a walk in the <laughs> yeah, yeah, i'm yeah. not gonna lie i still don't have pants on though guys so pants. <laughs> okay no, still no, pants, pants. no, socks, no shoes no sweatpants <laughs> <laughs> right no, yeah yeah it's uh it's it's, a, it's been a pleasure jared as usual thank you for your time and uh thank you for everybody chiming in thanks just thanks thanks sam and and all the impacts team also chiming in and and uh, uh um share information here and uh we will uh we'll see you guys soon again and uh thanks jared have a good night and uh uh everybody else have a good night and enjoy your whiskey drink responsibly and uh drink more kill thanks alex all right take, take care, care guys Bye.